In 1981, at only 23 years and fresh from McKinney University, Mujisha Muntu joined the NRA guerrilla war in Luero that saw President Yoweri Museveni ascend to power five years later. Having come from a staunch UPC family in Tungamo, Muntu was most times seen as a mole during the liberation struggle, even after he was shot in the chest. Now 62, the former army commander, Uganda's representative in the East African Assembly and former FDC President Muntu now wants to challenge his former commander, President Yoweri Museveni, who seeks to stretch his leadership to 40 years. But is it Muntu's time? And what does he stand for? Major General Mojisha Muntu Greg is on the spot tonight. General Muntu, thank you so much for having honored our invitation. And uh, believe you me, the spotlight of the country is on you tonight. Thank you. And I'm going to Pleasure begin. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to begin by saying this. General Muntu, I should consider myself your friend. But believe you me, in this interview, nothing, and I mean nothing, is off limits. <laughs> yeah. The world you'd runs be, on you'd, perception. You'll be doing your job. <laughs> the world runs on perception. Yeah. You are perceived to be weak and misplaced mm. in the rough and tumble of Ugandan politics. It's going to be extremely difficult, General Greg, to change that perception. We have heard that many times in the past. But uh, perceptions uh, at times can uh, reflect reality. That's your reality. At times, perceptions can uh, reflect false understanding of what the real situation is or about the reality of who a person is. In my particular case, I know that uh, those perceptions will definitely be proven false. With the passage of time, I've seen that happen what many times. What do you times. mean with the passage of time? <laughs> because mm -hmm. the labor of Muntu is weak. Yes, he's a gentleman, but he cannot get into the rough and tumble of Ugandan politics. No, he can't. Seems to be <laughs> what defines you. Well, I've actually noticed that uh, in many, many circles, that perception has already changed. Because they see impact on what we are doing. The things that we used to talk about in the past, which most people seem to uh, dismiss out of hand, they have started recognizing that they, uh, they actually do work. I've even noticed that there is, uh, the methods that we've been using, to some extent, have already started influencing things. The nature of how other people are operating, the nature of how other people have started more or less recognizing that the methods we've been applying do work. For example, if I may give you, a, is if I may give you, you example. Is that what you feel or really think that's the reality? I, I see it. I feel it. I notice it. If that was the case, yes. Alliance for National Transformation should be the buzz in the country, should be the buzz in Kampala, should be the buzz everywhere you go, but it is not. You are struggling with the visibility. The brand is strugg still struggling. Then... You come and say now people are learning from you? <laughs> a look at uh, the debate that there has been for quite a while in, uh, in public about uh, whether one can uh, uh, focus on building uh, organizational infrastructure, grassroots up. There's a time when people didn't even want to uh, give it any thought at all but now who is building but now but who is building structures who build who is building institutions in this country you could be making sense general Montu, but you're making sense to yourself ugandans are walking whether, a different path whether we are doing it uh, fully or not at least you clearly hear actually in a number of cases even loudly so people saying that's the right direction that's the correct thing to do you know I'm, and I'm, that, that means something well, there's a time when they thought that we were just wasting time, we were just operating like, uh, you know, up there in the clouds. 
But the reality has started setting in. You know? And in, but you know, in you, one you, year, you're a military general. And you're a military general. You, you know strategy, you also know tactic. Yes. I, I, I suppose strategy is the long goal. Yes. And tactic is the battle you win yes. every now and again. again. Yes. So strategy is A to Z. Yes. And tactic is A to B. Yes. But your A to B yes. seems to be problematic. No, absolutely You're not. looking at the strategy. <laughs> you know, but the when, tactics are when, wrong. When you look at uh, our existence as a political organization, just one year and a half years in terms of, 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 of age. Now to find that uh, we've been able to field 126 members of parliament and not concentrated in just one area, one sub-region, all over the country, and good quality candidates tells you, you something. Know, that alone, Why on earth that do you alone think, sends yes? a different message to me. Yes, yes. 126 uh, yes. candidates yes. in to, to, to a parliament that is, is going to be 500 plus. Yes. For heaven's sake, even if you won an election tomorrow and that's what you're working hard towards to, how do you even govern? Because 126, assuming even some, most of them or maybe half of them won't make it. I no, mean, those are the ones who are uh, on the Alliance for National Trans a transformation ticket. Yes. Direct. Yes. I don't think that we don't have allies. We have allies, of course. I mean, there are many allies in the independence. Quite no, a but number. But you see, if, fact. if we have a so parliament, even the, even if we have a parliament of, yes. of close, coming almost to 600, and, and General Muntu's party has just mobilized to have 120 something to, to, to be on the ballot, the, which is the, not the, even the, a half. You see, which, the issue, which is not a half. The because issue is listen to this, General. In one year suppose, and a half, right? I suppose, one year and a half, right? I suppose yes. every candidate yes. will, in every constituency, yes. they will try to campaign for themselves yes. and campaign for the party president. Yes. So you'll only have maybe people campaigning for you in 126 constituencies. In, in the other, almost 400, <laughs> you do not have a voice. No, 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 no. I think you are getting a very wrong picture. Don't think that in areas where we don't have parliamentary candidates, that we'll not be having people campaigning for the presidency. I can tell that we'll be having people campaigning for the presidency in every constituency. So, but you seem to walk with a bounce in your step because yes. you just have 126 uh, candidates in a parliament of over 500? No. In comparison to the number of, uh, of the period that we've been in existence, that's the most critical yes. thing. But the, the comparison is notwithstanding, yes. you are fighting for the same goal, the leadership of Uganda. No, no, I think you're looking you are, you are at this from... a. a a different perspective. I am looking at this from a perspective of the period we've been in existence as a political organization. There are many others who've been in existence for such a long time, and very few who, in their first one year, would be able to fill that many. There are so some who've been in. If I may in, use in, an in, analogy of yes. tactics and, and, stra and, and yes. strategy, yes. as a general, maybe yes. this is just a battle that you want to win, but the war is 2026. Actually, we won the war in 2021. We're going to take the presidents of this country. How is that going to be <laughs> even possible? Why not? When the men you have on the ground, your yes. foot soldiers, yes. are not even enough. Y you see, you forget that uh, the areas, for example, where we don't have ANT members of parliament in terms of uh, the candidates, but we've got many other areas where we have uh, uh, leaders, some in formal positions, others in informal positions, that are going to rally around the campaign of the presidency. That's a fact. It's not something that I'm just uh, putting no, up. Because I, I know. I have to yes. ask some people in this country. Yes. And in my line of duty, I've traveled Uganda quite extensively to yes. ask them to weigh in yes. about the presidential aspirants or now who are going to be candidates, yes. what they think about them. And, and yes. General Muntu, your name you know, comes up favorably. He's a good man. He's a gentleman. But when I add, yes. are you going to vote for him? They are hesitant, sir. <laughs> They'll change their minds. What is going to make them change their mind if they cannot well, change we are going mind? into a campaign. You know, for quite a while, many people didn't even know whether I would be running or not running. Because I've been meeting many people who would be asking me, Muntu, are you on the ticket or not? They've been asking me that question since 
the time when uh, we were in the process of separation with, the F with FDC, as we started uh, uh, what we call new formation in the process of uh, establishing alliance for national transformation. That has or, had always been a question. Many people would be asking me that. You know, of course, I, I do things differently, in a sense, because I could have started projecting myself even then. But I didn't believe that I should project myself because I was focusing on building an organization. Because I know that even when we take power, even when I would be at the top in terms of the presidency, you need the infrastructure blow. Because our focus, myself and the leaders that I'm with in Alliance for National Transformation, believe in two key things. One, building strong institutions. That's why we are starting with the, organi the party organization as an institution itself. Because our understanding is that even the moment we take power, we have got to ensure that we rebuild the institutions which are broken down, reestablish the systems and reinforce them so that we can have functional systems. Because at the end of the day, we, our, our mindset is completely removed from those who believe that you should have, as, 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 as people say, strong men or women in terms of leadership, charismatic leaders. I, I mean, if, if, if I wanted to become charismatic, I've got the capability actually to do that. Most people don't even understand that. I've got capability to become charismatic. I have got uh, 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 <laughs> skills even to become a populist if I chose to do so. I know how I could do that. But General Monson, I know how I could General appeal Monson, to people through populist uh, uh, tactics. Charisma and, and, and the ground swell of momentum in some cases but is you see, good given. To, let to, me, to, let me, me, let me, to me, those styles of management, you can whip up people's emotions, people's sentiments. They can rally around you. I mean, we've seen General Museveni is a charismatic leader. But you tell me where the country is at now. The possibility of a leader leaving the position that he has been holding for a long time and the country implodes. Our mindsets are different. Our approaches are different. That's why I'm managing yeah, my but, but, but so charisma different. will give you the momentum. Yes. The mom momentum will drive you into the leadership. Let me again use, uh, probably you know this better because you're a military B general. Yes. Because you're a military general. Yes. I was reading the books of history, and, and I think there's a French military strategist, a genius of his time. They introduced generals, a general to him, and they said, yes. he's a very good general, he's highly skilled, and you know what he asked? Is he lucky? And that was Napoleon. Yeah. They introduced a general to him and he's asking, yes. okay, he's a good, skilled general, but is yes. he lucky? Yes. Are you lucky, General Monte? Well, I believe that things work together to the good of those who, <laughs> you know, who know who created them. Timing is a very critical factor in leadership, in all areas of endeavor. I actually have a feeling that uh, where we are at, even as an organization, even those of us who are, you know, the individuals running that organization, that basically all these things that are working together will position us, not only to take power in this country, but to manage it in a manner that it has not been managed in that way hitherto. That's I the feeling I have. I, I pretty much suppose mm -hmm. that... That's where our focus is. Mm -hmm. And... All the things that we've been doing in a systematic way, really, and also having studied the, the ground, did the necessary analysis, and, and, and designed our organization, designed our messages in such a way that, that we should fit in this situation. Because there is a deep desire for change, not just change, but qualitative change. Because we've, been, we've seen changes in the last uh, 58 years since our independence. But for the first time, we believe that we are a set of people, a set of leaders within the Alliance for National Transformation, even as we work out arrangements to work with uh, other like-minded uh, people and uh, forces, that there needs to be qualitative change. Th that's why the message we've been pushing consistently, which we really feel gratified that we are seeing responses from the population because most of these good leaders who are coming into ANT are not attracted to ANT because of charisma of any leader. They are not attract attracted to ANT because we have money. They are not attracted to ANT because we are a large party. No, 
commitment. That's what this country has been lacking for the longest of time. Value-driven young men and women. Any day, I will feel more uh, satisfied when we get such young men and women who are committed, who really want to see this country change in a qualitative way, than have 100,000 people in a rally, me addressing them. Because we have seen hundreds of thousands of people in the last 58 years, must up in rallies, different times. But you see where we are as a country. You know, the lacking um, thing has been quality leaders but where and the concentration so where, of them where in an the organization. Quality? Where is the quality in yes. Brand Muntu? Because I it's, can it's, imagine... It's, it's, it's not Brand Muntu. Okay, we are trying to brand an organization, yes, yes, Alliance okay, for I'm, National I'm, yes, Transformation. But, but you are the leader, and I'm asking yes. for the quality in you. Yes. Uh, and this is how I want to ask, because I can imagine all those... Yes who are in the forces of change yes. must be looking at you with a sense of frustration on their faces and disappointment. Because yes. look, you were a party president of the Forum for Democratic Change, yes. the largest opposition political party. Yes. Many people sacrificed to build that party. Yes. But you decided to jump ship. Yep. Jumping ship was like a kick in the gut. And I'm sure most of them will never forgive you. Oh, they should actually thank me. I mean, if we had remained in FDC, we would still be fighting, even up to now. The so party if would be are, unstable. If, if you are a party, party leader, if you are a party leader, yes. join the party yes. where your colleagues had fought so much yes. to build it. You know, the, the, you are magnanimous enough to give you the, the mandate to lead it as, as party president, and all you did was to leave it. <laughs> and, and yet you could have galvanized, emboldened, and built. <laughs> Patrick. Yes, yes. You, could in, have in, in, f f you are forgetting very fast. I was in the movement. <laughs> you know, the sacrifices we made for the time that we, we did everything humanly possible to fight and take power. If I was to focus on that, I would still be stuck in the movement. But I walked. Is is, we see one thing, one thing at least I know about myself is I make decisions. Every time I'm at, I'm at a crossroads, I cannot start listening to, to, to sentiments or emotions or whatever. I do analysis. Once I find that this is the correct path to take, I will walk. So, General and, Muntu, and I am so sure you will walk from all the alliance. I, I mean, let me tell you. Even even you, before that's I walk, let, 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 let me tell you. You walked thing. away from the movement. Patrick, Actually, you walked away from the UPC <laughs> because your family was <laughs> oh, UPC. Yes, I, I walk. You walked away from UPC. You, know, you walked the, away the, from the, your Museveni. You have walked away from from uh, Doctor Besije. You obvious. walk away from yourself <laughs> <laughs> from the alliance. Patrick, let me tell you one thing. I know, if now as as a leader, um, at, at least a flag bearer of the Alliance for National Transformation, one of the key leaders. If I was to lose direction and you find that the things I, I talk about are in conflict with the things I do, I can tell you a significant number of leaders within the NT would walk away from me if I was still the leader of the NT. That's the beauty of what we are building. But you see, At least we are trying to create an organization where people are not following an individual. Because we are together because of ideals, but you because know, of common values. I can tell you in terms of the development of politics in this country, that's huge. That's a huge development. So when, when you walked away from yes. the Forum for Democratic Change, yes. you have obviously weakened it. Look from, at, you, look at the foot, yes. Look at your foot soldiers, the yes. people who have walked away with. The Honorable Ali Salaso, the Honorable Winnie Kiza, Mr. Mugarur, in fact, the former chair, chairman of the Electoral Commission of the party. You know... That weakens the opposition. <laughs> that Patrick, weakens Patrick, the lake-minded pa people, Patrick, forces of change. No, no, no. Actually, our separation with the FDC created stability for FDC, and we have stability in NT, because all of us are pursuing the strategies we believe in. Remember that there was contention within FDC about the two 
path that the we finance protect, and infrastructure the finance and, yes 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 absolutely and we are engaged in warfare day and night the tensions would be you know high all the time the only luck that uh, fdc had then was that i was the one at the top and i would all the time ensure that what was boiling inside would not spill out into the public most times so most people didn't know what was happening inside but it was it was like uh, two hostile groups within one organization now but when we, we separated we, yes. because because <coughs> basically fdc thought that uh, we were like a, a, a dead weight on them we, we were we were slowing them down because that, at least that's the campaign that uh, was being used in 2016 and that uh, if we weren't slowing them down they could take power and we said no problem so when we separated fds had the opportunity to concentrate on doing what they believe in so whoever and are now also <coughs> concentrating on what we believe in so i don't see where the problem is so and whoever, i don't see whoever, how whoever, that would weaken fdc whoever is going to carry the day yes in this election yes should be able to recruit from the nrm yes and and, and when you moved i expected to see people from the NRM, from UPC or whatever, joining you. <laughs> but who were they? The guys you are with at Najan and Kumbi are the ones who crossed with you. 2021 will show quite many people. But you know, Muntu. I, I, have, I, have, I have a feeling, I have uh, an understanding that many, many people who subscribe to uh, the NRM, some may not even move out and, and, and are banned in physical terms. But really, they appreciate what we are doing. And I believe quite many will even vote for us. You are competing ag against a party that yes. has been in power for 35 years. They yes. have the advantage of the incumbency. They have the advantage of the fusion of state infrastructure and assets to, to use them for, the, for party purposes. They have that infrastructure at their disposal. And what do you do as opposition? You are fragmented, clearly. No, you are headed for fragmented. the meeting. Because you should have had a cohesion. Maybe front many like-minded people think you should have formed one formidable position and take on the NRM juggernaut. Really, that's a very complex Now you have, you have 86 people who have picked nomination forms. You have 22 who have brought them back. You have 10 who have been cleared. The, parliament, uh, the presidential. Presidential, yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, like everybody wants to have a shot at it. But what has been the experience in the past? You know, everybody's had so why quite many. Five, why seven, eight, nine, so ten. So why haven't you learned from the past? Do you, have you noticed that in 2006, in 2011, in 2016, the population uh, does analysis, looks around a candidate that they would want to give support, and they go behind one candidate. Have you noticed that trend? I have a feeling that that may be replicated. You know, I, whereas uh, people, all of us have our constitutional right yes. to, to run for office, yes. when you see 86 people vying for the position of the presidency, <laughs> it's either the position has become cheap or everybody wants to have a, a, a go at it. No, you know, of, it's course, like it's of, course, the, of course, one of the... Uh, around ar the issue of so many people going to politics. I think there are several factors. One, politics is one area now where most people think that there's opportunity to make money. All other avenues have been literally uh, shut down, if I may use that word. In business, people are struggling. In the professions, people are struggling because the, the remuneration they get in the positions of uh, uh, when you are a professional is, is compared to, for example, the money people would get if they become members of parliament. The margins are so huge. That's one factor. The other factor, unfortunately, General Gen Seven is a, a style of management and his method of uh, uh, selecting uh, leaders has diminished the understanding of what leadership is to a point where people think anybody can become anything. I, I don't think anybody has done research 
around that. But if we, got, we get any, 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 any scholars who do research, the impact is huge. And it's not been just in, 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 in actions, but even verbally the things he says undermines the role of leadership. I mean, like when you look at members of parliament, if, if a president of a country who, who the, whom the constitution says is, is meant to be a fountain of honor, and therefore he or she would be encouraging the public to support or, 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 or bring up leaders of integrity, uh, leaders of character. And then he says, you just vote anybody, even if he or she will go in parliament and sleep. As long as when they wake them up, they vote for NRM. What does that say about leadership? That basically you can send uh, someone who is incapable. Okay, but that could be the case. Look, but at, the, look at the selection <coughs> of ministers this man, this, for the this last man you're trying 30 to challenge, years. This man you're trying yes. to challenge seems yes. to have beaten all of you in tactics and strategy. Look. But in the People process, who are uh, opposing, yes, but you know, he has better tactics a lot of damage. and better strategy. But in fact, a lot of all damage. of you, all of you, yeah. including yeah. Colonel Kiza Besiji and yourself, yes. have commended Museveni for his strategy. That, no, no, that, no, that no. I've, ne I've never recommended his strategy. You, you, you've said, no. well, he's even right here, if yeah. he, you just said he's strategic, even though he's brought the country where it is now. Yeah. Because yeah. he seems to look far. Yeah. Let me give. I mean, I mean, look, look, Patrick. Museven is not the most, uh, the most long-lasting leader in power in the world. I mean, we have seen many examples of people who have acted like Museveni, who've held countries together, and the moment they leave power, countries implode. Joseph Broz Tito, Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia was even more developed than this, in this country. Joseph Broz Tito leaves power. What happens? Yugoslavia disintegrates. There are now six countries which emerged out of, of Yugoslavia. Look at Somalia. Look at what almost happened to Congo. Look at what's happening in, 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 in Libya. Look at what is happening in, in, in Iraq. So we, we know that uh, charismatic leaders, yes, they can take power. They can also hold it for long. But also know the effects of, of uh, the after effects of when they leave power. And so. Okay, you know, yeah. I can imagine the NRM party and candidate Museveni is looking at the people who are going to oppose him in this election. In this election, yes, they are more or less the same people. And his mind is actually waiting for you because he knows you are so beatable and he has a record to show. I know he's beatable. This is my first time to, to be that I will compete against him. But you, you are a party president. You fronted a candidate. You oh, worked so hard. You worked oh, so hard, oh, General Mutu. Yes, and as a reporter, yes, I have yes, followed you in the field, yes. working so hard. Oh, definitely. But yes, you yes. came of you, you, you came short. No, no, I, I, I know, and I know exactly so, what our so, weakness so is. So the man you are trying to I compete know, against. I know what the our man you are trying to compete oh, against. In yeah, his I, mind, I, I know, in I his know. mind, Patrick, he looks I at know your what position our is where. and he thinks you know. You let let, let me tell you, for example, for that time, he had played a psychological game in which it unfortunately... It never ends, sir. You know, just let me explain my understanding of that and now. At that time, he had managed to draw clear lines between us and them. And unfortunately, would play in that. Because the moment he creates us and them... Then you clearly become a target for anybody who is in the movement. Those lines, as we speak now, between him, or even between the movement, and some of us who are in the opposition, like ANT, are brarred. Yeah, but you see, you think that he was only one, has one tactic and one strategy. Oh, don't <laughs> think that he's the one so, who plays the games, my friend. We know what we are doing. We've been at what we've been doing for a long so when time. So when you supported... You're wearing Museveni to go to the bush yes. and fight for the liberation of this country. In fact, you are even shot in the chest. Did you envisage mm. that General Yoweri Museveni would be stretching his leadership for 40 years? No, I, 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 I could see certain uh, character traits. So in 1986, you knew the person you brought 
fought so hard to bring to power who was going to stay in power for 40 years or trying no, no, to no, stay no. in power I, for 40 years. Of course, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, uh, project I know how many years. So it is also possible power. right now. Just a that second. It is also possible right now that you yes. were in is ahead of you by many years. With the team, no, no, with the team no, no. you wake you up know, to smell know, the coffee. In, in life, with the team you wake up life, to smell the coffee in, in, is gone. In, in, in dynamics of change, there is ascending forces and descending forces. He's on top of a descending force. We are, we are on top of an ascending force. So it's not just a factor of him, the individual. There's also a factor of forces at play. You know, <laughs> you, you have served in the army. Yes. And uh, the army is very key. And I have a lot of respect for the men in uniform and the institution of the UPDF. Mm. Because for me, it's one of those public institutions that still have a pulse. At one point, and I'm going to refresh your mind with a quote that you, with your own words, you said you want the soldiers and said you do not fight just to bring an individual to become a personal army. But let me ask yes. my producer uh, to bring that. Uh, unfortunately, it was a time when one of your heroes had fallen, yes. but yes. that is when you spoke with a lot of clarity on this. Let me have it played. So when we were in NRA, we were not a personal army. We were a national army. And we are fighting to ensure it becomes a national. It is a transition. It's a process. When it turned to UPDF as it is now, it's not a person's army. It's a national army. And we'll do everything humanly possible to ensure that that comes into reality. Because if that didn't come into reality, it would be unfortunate for that, those of us who have served, served, those who are dead, and those who are still living. That would live in a situation where a person would think that we could ever fight for an individual. Do you think, General Muntu, when you say those words, do you think, General Muntu, that the institution of the UPDF, they really see themselves as an institution and not attached as the army of General Museveni? I know the majority of the officers and men, UPDF, they were educated, they were trained, they were highly exposed, they have been in conflict areas, they have seen an, uh, failed states, they are capable of analysis but a very complicated situation. So what they do is not necessarily what is in their mind. So there's contention around the army. So you think the men in uniform love their commander, but they love their country more? They want to feel proud in uniform. Let me give you an they example. Want to, they let don't want to be you, put let me, into... Let me give you an example. I, was, I have ever been in uniform. I know what it means. When you are in uniform, and you feel love from the people that you defend. I also what it means, I also know what it means. If you reach a situation where because of maybe a conflict situation and you feel that the population has started detesting you, I know that. Let me, let me also show you and this. And that's why I feel pain actually for those th there's who, a, there's a who still find themselves in that kind of situation. There's a Brigadier Deus Sunday from I think mechanized regiment. I, I hope they still call it mechanized regiment in Massacre. And this is what he says of people whom he thinks are ideologically bankrupt and should not be given power. Let me, let me play that. As long as we are still existing, we are not there to give up. It's a true group. It's <laughs> we are not ready to give out to, the, to, to, to people, to, uh, I mean, uh, ideologically banker people to not get up Alright. How do you reconcile those two facts? That uh, they are so good, but they are, not, they are consolidating, they are staying in. In fact, they are digging in. I told you that they are officers and men who are well educated, who are well trained, and who are exposed. Some are not. 
you think an officer like that one, knowing that he's on camera, he says the things he's saying, you think he understands? He doesn't understand his environment. He has no clue about what he's involving himself in. But, you know, at one you point... You speak like that, there's evidence, and you have no clue that change happens? One time, during the protests and the demonstrations, <laughs> when you are very angry, you told the policeman to watch out. I don't know whether those people have learned from you, but I have a tendency of trying to keep following you on the things that you do and what. And uh, I'm going to ask my producer again. <laughs> to show you the angry Gregory Mujisha Montu, warning a police officer. You go slow. I don't know what rank you have got in police. I don't know. That's not the question. Tomorrow, you may find yourself out of that uniform. <laughs> you had better work for a situation out there so that when you are outside the uniform, you are safe where you'll be. Yeah, sure. Use your head, my friend. <laughs> Let me take a break and I'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest tonight is presidential aspirant who is about to become a presidential candidate from the Alliance for National Transformation, General Mojisha Muntu Greg. And uh, he's aspiring to lead this country. And so we have a conversation and questions to be put to him. Before we took a break, I was showing you from the archives um, your own anger against policemen whom you thought he was working, not using his mind. Do you think over time there has been a change among the men and women in uniform, especially from the side of the Uganda police? You notice quite a number of uh, officers <coughs> who are really very careful, even when they are carrying out very, very complicated uh, orders, wrong ones. Because I believe quite a number of them recognize that at the end of it all, you become uh, personally liable. My hope is that they become more and more, that they become more and more. Because it's only logical for them to know there is a time when they are going to be out of uniform. I mean, they must see the, 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 the thousands of us who were once in the military uniform, out of it now. Many who've been in police uniform, out of it now. So they should know that that happens. So when you're out of military uniform or out of police uniform, when you've been walking all over people, what do you expect? They are going to, to put garlands around your neck or they will just uh, run you down the, 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 the road if, if, if you really have nothing to protect you. It's just logical. And that's why we keep communicating it so that uh, those who have got uh, uh, ears to hear can hear. Those who have no hear and they don't uh, practice what uh, uh, is logical, they, they pay a price. I mean, I have seen, I have seen really how those who've been in uniform and they abused uh, uh, the positions in which they, they were, when they get out of favor or they get out of uniform, quite a number of them really, you find them living very uncomfortable lives. People shun them. Why should you do that? For what? You know, money is such an important issue in politics, especially Ugandan politics, for a member of parliament, in fact, to be able to go through, chances are that you have to deploy between 200 to 500 million. Others have even gone to up a billion. I don't know how you, you're playing this game because it's so evident that you need money. In a constituency of 70,000 people deploying half a billion, it's quite colossal sums of but money. I also know that quite a number of them who use that kind of money lost. And even lost people who didn't have money. That's also another you know, side of the story. Yeah, but you, you, but you need to have some you, uh, financial watches. You, you, you followed the movement primaries? 
<laughs> what is it? Number of people who had money, you know, who were money bags were floored by people who didn't have money. <laughs> okay, I, of course, I recognize that you need uh, money for, you know, logistical support, for, for fuel to move around, you know, fuel for, I mean, money for, for uh, radio talk shows, for airtime, for a number of things. The, the definite that this, form this of money is, this talk is, show is, is, free. is required. This talk show is free. Yeah, but how many people are able to access it and all over the country, you know, on radio? Yeah, uh, no, I just, want, I just wanted to say that because you could say and think, somebody thinks yeah. maybe money is paid for a talk no, show no, like no, this. No, 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 I mean, uh, the Kampala TV stations, the Kampala radio stations, most of them have free programs. I don't know whether it's because of competition or what, but in the rural areas, around this time, very, very few people are able to access these kinds of programs. So, so I have, have, to have seen, money to I have seen you know, among your, your colleagues uh, and, and as aspirants and, and, and candidates, you know, on different social media groups uh, where you are asking for money, you yes. are fundraising, oh, you're yes. soliciting for funds. Yes. And I'm thinking, well, it's the norm in Uganda is that when a politician is running for office, He's going, to be, he's going to be dishing out money. <laughs> Must change that. Thing. So I wonder whether you're actually making inroads to get money. Because well, we when you're talking about a, a member of parliament yes. deploying almost 500 yes. million yes. into a constituency, yes. I wonder when you flip that and you want the, the one inch poor Ugandans to sell their chicken and, and their goat uh, and to give you money, whether it's going to be. Of course, the, the, with the, that. I mean, the experiences they go through should be the very reason why they should now change so that the ones who fund you know, uh, parties who fund candidates. So the candidates who come and give money to them, uh, maybe 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, whatever money they, they give them, at the end of the day, they never go back. They never work for them. They get to parliament and they spend the five years trying to recover what they spend. So o o that cost is high for the population. But you can imagine if, when the situation, not if, it will change. This situation will change. Because people need to understand that politics is at the core of their livelihood. The moment politics goes wrong, wherever you are, whether in the private sector, maybe you are, you are a farmer, maybe you are a teacher, maybe you are in, in healthcare services, you'll be affected negatively. So we must concentrate on putting politics right. And there's no way you're going to have qualitative change in this country unless you're able to invest into it. You simply can't. Let's, let's look at... Uh, yes. at um, Constituencies are alone. Um, I think there are almost like 45,000, you know, people who will be running for office from village to parish to sub county to wherever. Yes. And, 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 and uh, of course, there, there are more than that because in every position, if I'm two or three or four people, yeah. I'm told almost like 1.8 million candidates now. <laughs> are running around this country telling yeah, us how they are... If you put in LC1s and LC2s, yes. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. 1.8 million Ugandans yes. are running around telling us how they are going to change our lives. Yes. Most of them they want. Yes. But these 1.8 million, majority of them, you'll find that NRM has positioned the candidate at every position. Yes. From village to presidential. What that means, when you have a candidate at every position... To start with, you have like 1.8 million supporters. We are seven, they are now 17 million voters. Yes, but 1.8 yes. million supporters yes. who are going to be running on these positions, on, uh, supporting NRM. What a head start. <laughs> Patrick, it seems you, as, you assume that everybody who is NRM <coughs> will necessarily vote, vote the, the presidential candidate of NRM. Largely, most of them will. <laughs> Anyway, let's not argue over that. Let's wait. Okay, so look, I, I just want to show you President Yoweri Museveni seems to have worked well on infrastructure, the roads, the dams now. He seems to have worked well on security and seems to have worked well on Pan Africanism. It's quite I think revered in the region but, but where for his leadership. Compared and his supporters what? would be saying, why change that? Where compared to what? If, if you are sucked in his uh, reasoning, which he normally <laughs> parades of comparing to where we were, yes. But if you flip that and you compare with where we ought to be, he yeah, really hasn't made significant moves. 
<laughs> I mean, uh, look, look. Mm -hmm. Countries that within the same time span, th because now it's, it's getting close to 34, five years. In the same period of time, look at the leap that the South Korean economy made, the leap which the uh, uh, Malaysia made, the Singapore. leap which Singapore made. Compare with where we are at now. From third world to first world. Yeah. This is kindergarten stuff if you compare it from that perspective. But if you compare with where we were, yes, you can see there are significant uh, advances. But that's so not you're the saying way we this think. is not where we ought to be? That's not where we think. That's not the way we think. That's not even the way we would want to be judged. We want to be judged to say, in 10 years, we'll do this. And you have, if you have not reached a significant percentage of where you ought to be, you should not celebrate. So what is the Uganda under the leadership of General Moon to likely to look like? One thing if we're going to, to... If you are to dazzle the person who's looking at you right now. We seek to do things that will make, enable Ugandans to be happy in all their areas of endeavor. Because at least we will be dealing with uh, situations where we know that the moment you have justice, the moment you have transparency, the moment you have uh, fairness, the one moment you use an even hand so that there are equal opportunities, so that there's zero tolerance to corruption, and you concentrate resources in areas, education, in health, infrastructure, energy, job creation. Ugandans, the majority of them now are educated. When you create that kind of environment, we're not different from other human beings. What sparks the innovativeness and creativity of the human being is the environment in which they operate. Create that environment and see what will happen in this country. The element of values. Yes. The element of integrity that seems to, we seem to have a deficit on that. We seem to have lost it that's what at we the family to level. <laughs> that's what I, we seek to in fact, change. the Ministry of Gender right now is having what they call parenting guidelines that they're supposed to give the rest of us to tell us how we can <laughs> raise our children. <laughs> is an indicator that the problem has even gone beyond government. It's in our homes. How do you deal with that? The most effective method of influence is example. A country like this, in five, ten years, with a set of leaders who walk the talk, you see a reversal in the thinking and the mindsets of the population. When there's change, in many, oh, in, really in many, many places, it's not only something about Uganda. There's always a window of, you know, of opportunity. But so there's, also, like one year. there's also a possibility Yes. that you get into power and power corrupts you corrupts you and changes you instead of revealing who you are exactly yeah. yeah yeah why do you think we take time to do things why do you think <laughs> you know i could have gone out and projected myself as an individual it is easier but i know i know that as an individual you really cannot change much that's, you must, that's why you must concentrate on building, one, an institution. Two, the foundation for building that institution, if you are going to be, uh, Im Im create impact in a positive way, you must attract like-minded people. Do you worry people whom you work with, people who walk, you know, the same path, work in concert, you'll make an impact. And I can tell you, if there is anything that uh, enables enables us to feel good in spite of what is happening around us is to see that like-minded people are gravitating towards each other and we are becoming a concentration in the Alliance for National Transformation. We will take this country and we will change it because we will work as a team. You know, and the good <coughs> thing, where we once, are, once right? people keep seeing where there is light, more and more will get attracted there. Today, General Montu, people seem to be happy to 
identify themselves with the local areas where they come from. Yes. I can give you an example. People can be happy because you are from Toro, you are in yes. Toro, now you have a city, you think you're okay, you don't want to understand whatever is happening in Project Uganda. Somebody can be in West Nile and you think, you know what, I'm from West Nile and I'm okay, I'd rather be there. Some people can even fantasize of having a Nile Republic, a Yira Republic, or something like that. This is where we are. Or here in Buganda, people can be so proud of Buganda Kingdom, and I think that is it. When it comes to national unity and, and patriotism and Project Uganda, it appears many have given up. On on this the project dream of, uh, of yeah, having the, uh, pe pe people a retreating, a people retreating country. to their tribes and <laughs> retreating to their cultures. And, uh, we are a counter, we are a counter force. That that is going to be reversed. Uh, and we are the the, the 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 spearhead of that counter force. But there are many Ugandans in different parts of the country who desire to see a prosperous country, and who see themselves as Ugandans, regardless of whatever regions they come from. And one of the things that makes us feel so glad, even after this experience of one year and a half, is that we have attracted leaders from all over the country. When you see, for example, the, 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 the spread of the candidates at, at, at different levels, MP level, uh, LC5 level, LC3 levels, and the councillors, they're spread all over the country. What does that mean? It means that there are people who think alike and they're going to act in concert and they come from across the country from different religious groups. What does that mean? It means that ANT, for the first time, we're going to have a concentration of people who think alike, who are value driven and will do the things that we've desired for the last uh, 58 years but we have never seen fulfilled. Which means that we are well placed and we, we really thank God that we will make history, not in terms of taking power, but using power responsibly and being able to achieve the very things that people have desired for all this long, and they have failed hitherto. <laughs> you see, <laughs> we travel all over the country. We speak to uh, young people, young men and women, from across the country. The sense of desperation that there has been in this country to think that nothing works. When you go and you start getting people from across different communities coming together, hopeful that actually what most people have thought for a long time that is impossible, that it is possible. <laughs> if there's anything that will drive you and keep you moving, fuel you, even amidst the most complicated situations, it's that. And it's going to work. We are going into a scientific kind of campaign where you have no less contact with the people, which is going to be very complicated. I wonder how you are planning to be able to be effective amidst the pandemic. I mean, it's the, so it's it's, the it's, SOPs. It's, it's, it's tough. I, I, I don't want to pretend and, and make it seem as if it's going to be an easy, an easy thing. There are, there are challenges. Uh, most the challenges of resources because it is going to be um, the most effective methods are going to be media. Electronic, print, but also social, social media. And, and then having teams in the different, at the different levels who can move, you know, doing uh, what one would call kakuyege. That's where when you have teams all over the country, being able to put resources behind them is a critical factor. The biggest impediment for those of us who are in the opposition is the financial resources. The country is ripe for change. But the, the challenges of COVID and the methods that we have to use, resources are a critical factor. Maybe let me take this opportunity and, and speak about the issue of, of, of resources. Because I know there are many people who want change in this country, and who want quantitative change. You need to invest into it. Look for a, a political organization in the opposition that you believe in. If it's JEMA, finance it. If it is FDC, finance it. If it's NUP, finance it. If it's DP, finance it. If it's ANT, we need money. 
there are so many things that we have to do. For example, building the necessary infrastructure for vote protection. So if you want change, really invest into it. Because the dynamics favor change. But it's not just going to happen unless we apply our skills in doing the things which are necessary for that change to, to happen. Looks and like therefore, the, the opposition parties need financing. And therefore, the Ugandans who believe in change, you need to do something about it. Genome 7 just goes and raids all the ministries and gets this money. Very soon they are going to be saying 250,000, 300,000, every LOC one <laughs> for, for the movement. The, these movement leaders don't go selling their cows in their villages to, to come and finance that. It is our money. So anybody who wants to counter that, of course the opposition doesn't need money of that nature to give to people. That, we don't believe in that. But you need people to move. You need to organize. You need to go and train those, uh, those agents. You need uh, communications. You need uh, media. Okay. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, I'll open the lines. You'll see the numbers on the screen. You pick your phone and call us. Try to be brief as much as possible. And should you be one of those perhaps who would want to disagree with General Moon to disagree with respect. And when I come back, I'll also be asking General Moon to his take on uh, now that we hear the PPDA is telling the Electoral Commission to ensure a local firm is given the job of printing the ballot papers. What does that mean and what do they say? We'll be right back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest tonight is, is presidential aspirant who is about to become a presidential candidate from the Alliance for National Transformation, Major General Mujisha Munt Greg. And uh, I'm asking about his, uh, why he should, we should give him the mandate to be our head of state in this election. And before I can just get the lines, and I know many people are trying to ask you questions or give their comments, I've just heard that the PPDA is telling the Electoral Commission to look for a local uh, firm to be able to print the ballots. I wonder for you who have a stake in this election more than we do because you are candidates and, and so that's the job you're doing. What do you make of that? Because these firms, foreign and local, had presented their bids and then the, the Electoral Commission chose uh, foreign firms for some reasons they thought they are the best. And now nominations are just a few days away and you're telling them you use local. <laughs> well, I don't have details. Today we asked the Electoral Commission. You did. They didn't give us details, but uh, we intend to meet with them immediately after our nominations. My, my, my hope really is that they exercise uh, maximum responsibility in this regard. While they can have uh, ballot papers for local government, that's a, a huge, a huge uh, uh, budget in any case. And uh, parliamentary, because those are not high stakes. The presidential is high stakes. I'm really hoping that they are not going to, you know, uh, be that careless. To have local farms which can easily be infiltrated, easily be manipulated. The presidential election is high stakes. They shouldn't gamble with that. I see how... If, if they gamble... And anything goes wrong, and, and, and the country is drawn into a situation that wouldn't desire to be in, people will pay high cost for that. They really have to exercise responsibility in that. They that's, shouldn't gamble. That's a veiled warning. No, it's not. It's a reality. I'm going to open the lines. You have the numbers on the screen. I'll pick your call over your phone and, and tell us what you think. Your name, where you are, and where you are. Hello? I think we have comms challenges with that one, um, so we're going to pick another call online. Hello? Yes, sir. What's your name? My name is Okecho. Okecho? Yes, this is just a concern. Okay. I'm just trying to tell Major General, it will be okay for them to ally. If you try to look around all the candidates, these people would leave for Bobby to take 
up the seed so that they can easily change. Because if, if Bokwai takes it, it would be very easy to discuss that next time it major general Mugisha Muntu. Because if you try to screen, he is the potential leader. Someone who leads us to change, who is none other than Bobby White, because he has more support. Thank you for that, for your time, brothers. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Kecho, uh, for your point. I'm going to take another uh, caller, and General Muntu is going to respond to you at the end. Hello. Hello. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Okay. Um, that uh, call is sending us an echo into the studio. What you do is that if they pick your, your, your call, please, you turn down the volume of your TV so that we can have a, a good conversation. Hello. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening, too. What's your name and where are you calling from? And please go right ahead with your question or your comment. I'm called Modern. Okay. Yes. I want to recommend Jeno Mutsha Muntu for what he's doing for the country. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, go right ahead, sir. Yes, what is doing for the country? What he talked about? People who need change, they need to finance the opposition to see that change they need in the country. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, our caller from Umbarara. Um, let me try to take a couple of callers so that we get uh, quite a views from different sections or regions of our country. Hello. Yes. Thank you so much, our caller from Umbarara. Okay, um, please, I, 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 I plead with you always to make sure when you're calling, turn down the volume. If you leave it high, it will, we shall not have a healthy co conversation with you to be sending an echo to you and to myself and then it will be messy. But when you turn down the volume, then you'll be able to speak uh, properly. So let me take another call online. Hello. Hello. OK. Um, it looks like uh, this is the guidance I'll keep giving. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. Yes, good evening. Good evening, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. What's your name and where are you calling from and what's your <laughs> question or this comment? This is Dr. Innocent from Nakasongola. Dr. Innocent in Nakasongola. Yeah, so uh, personally I would plead to the opposition if actually they are all interested in changing. Oh, it's a pity um, we have lost connection to on that line with Dr. Innocent in Nakasongola. Uh, before you could complete your point. I'm going to try to take another caller. Hello? 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 Yes, good evening. What's your name, sir? And what's your, your comment or your question? Uh, this is General Michael calling from Kampala. Yes, Michael. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, incoming president, Mr. Mugisha Muntu. Okay. Now, he has been in FDC. Yes. He left FBC now is an ANT. Mm -hmm. I want to recommend him for one thing. Mm. He is one person who wants change for this country. Okay. Now, the only challenge that we have in this country is unity among the opposition. Mm. What does he have to say about the unity among the opposition? All right. Because without unity, we cannot change this country. We cannot change the leadership here in this country. Thank what, you. All right. Thank you so much. I'm Michael in Kampala. I'm going to try to take two more calls, and then General Muntu will respond at once. Uh, I have a call online. Hello. 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 Yes. Good evening, sir. What's your name, and where are you calling from? Good evening, sir. Yes. What's your name, sir? I'm I'm having struggle to hear you, though. Hello. Yes. Go right ahead, sir. Yeah, I'm called Juma, Sebi Juma here in Naguru. Okay, Juma in Naguru, go right ahead. Yeah, first of all, I'm happy to see this new set in the office. Okay. Um, the way I pursue a field as a country, I have a good leader. Yes, you. You seem to be saying you are happy with General Muntu, you seem to be a good leader. Is that what you have said? 
Okay. Um, unfortunately, the line was not very clear. Uh, I hope I'm not putting words in his mouth. Hello. Yes, hello. Yes, sir, good evening. Good evening. What's your name? Yeah, this is Lisa. Lisa, where are you calling from? Yes, yes Lisa, go right ahead, Lisa. Oh, all right. Um, I think, uh, well, probably we've had uh, communication issues, I suppose, but there are some questions that you had. Somebody thinks it's Bobby Wine is a man. Somebody thinks we should, you should be able to unite around uh, all of forces of change. Yeah. And, and other think that you, you are the, you're the, you're the man. We've, so. we've, we've constantly been in touch for the last two years with other political groups. And uh, our view was that we should all concentrate in those last two years to build stability within ourselves, first and foremost. Because even when you cooperate at the top, you need all to be strong, well organized, and also to be stable as separate entities. And also to ensure that we work towards uh, a, a, a state of, uh, of harmony mm -hmm. within the opposition itself. Because when you, even, even when you get one candidate at the top, the strength of that candidate is going to be dependent on the strength brought together by the different units if they have already built their own strength. Mm -hmm. But if they are unstable, even if you become, you know, you come together, you will still remain uh, unstable as, as, a, as a large entity. Fortunately, I noticed that uh, hostilities have now lessened. And one would hope that, uh, we had hoped that we would have uh, one uh, presidential candidate. The time that is left seems to be quite complex, unless down the road uh, 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 candidates uh, decide to uh, step out and support one. There are always possibilities. However, even if we don't get one candidate, if we as opposition parties cease from attacking each other, and we focus on, on, on our, our weapons against the sitting regime and coordinate effort in other areas, even when we don't have one candidate, we can still have impact. So we keep on collaborating, we keep on discussing all possibilities. But there's a possibility that we may not have one presidential candidate, but we work together, for example, for vote protection. And, and, and uh, I'm not saying that uh, what has happened the last three elections would necessarily be the same. But if the same trend was to follow, you can have 20 opposition candidates and the population zeroes around one. At least that's what happened 2006, 2011, 2016. It is still possible. So if you coordinate effort in uh, protecting the vote and you are not hostile to each other and you project that image out in the public it creates hope in the population and if the population itself focuses and does its own analysis and rotates around one or two you can still have the effect of having one even if you not have consciously reached that from the top so we should remain hopeful. Situation is uh, um, ripe for change. We who are in the opposition just need to keep on focusing on our organizational capabilities. And those who want change need to give the necessary backup to the opposition political parties for us to put into implementation the plans that we have. It's, 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 it takes two to tango. Okay, I'm going to be op to open the lines again so that maybe we can have two more questions or comments uh, which will take us to the end of our night's broadcast or this show. Um, the numbers are on your screen. Yeah? Hello? Hello? All right. Um, I, I think, again, like I said, if you pick the phone and you want to call, you have to turn down the volume so that uh, it doesn't send an echo to us and to you. I have a caller online. Hello. Okay. Um, let me try to pick one more. 
Our call on line, hello. Okay, looks like uh, we've had challenges, but we're happy for those who are able to go through and, uh, and call us. What happens sometimes, it gets uh, very crowded, and then you... Hello. 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 Yes. Good evening. I'm just calling from Kitagwenda. You're calling from Kitagwenda. What's your name, sir? Mugumia Rogers. Mugumia Rogers, you are loud and clear. Go right ahead, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd like to move to. Okay. For the participation is is doing in this country. Okay. And I would just add the open. Uh, uh, Unite at all levels mm -hmm. and we make it in this year come to the one. Thank you very much. Okay. Mugumi Rogers in Kitagwenda, we thank you so much. Uh, how I wish everybody would just follow Mugumi Rogers what? Not in what you think, but in the way how you are handling your, your, your phone. It looks like you turned down the volume. It's not sending an echo, and we are having a, a lovely conversation with you. Let me try just take one more. Hello? Hello? Yes, good evening, sir. Hello? Yes, good evening, sir. Joseph, you're on air. Joseph, where are you calling from? I'm from Chisimu Katoke. Kiseni Katoke. Yes, I'm from Kiseni Katoke. Uh, my big point, mm -hmm. uh, I respect that guy. Okay. Our yes, president, Mugisha. Let okay. me be Luganda, I think. Okay, uh, we understand Luganda. He understands it even more than myself. Go right ahead. Yeah. Mm. Mr. Mugisha, I want to. Yes, sir. I'm respecting you from Shokubanga. I'm promoting the new area of Uganda. Deke tumusawa kwe chige mbuchiri chimu. Atule na wasaji ya opposition. Tutubate seji tu chimu. Silo kuwange mkwanga na fituli chusa. Kuwanga sawa zino tunile kuwanga. Nevi tulavie kusawa zino. Uwesu kwa mungina tuga ama mungina bulu mungina puko vila mwono. Uwesu kwa wafu mtivye tuli. Katumulinga watumala mwa ama. Yuka tusura kunga ama mba karuke kuwanga. Kwa katee la kumigire tutulava mufuro mbili mkaga wata nduwati. All right, thank you so much. A call up there from, from Kat, Kat, you said Katoke. Katoke. Okay, um, maybe mm -hmm. I'm tempted mm -hmm. to think I can pick one more caller. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. What's your name? I'm calling Stephen Chairman of Kamocha Green Valley here. Uh, the, Stephen in Kamocha Green Valley. I'm the chairman of this one. All right, sir. You're on air, sir. I could say that I'm a support of NRI, but I could only support NRI, but I could support Mugisha Muntu. All right. Thank you. Thank you so, th thank you so much, yes. chairman from Kamocha. Thank you. Uh, do you have another thing to say? All right. I think he's gone. Okay. Let me just take one more last caller online. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Oh, this is Thompson from Mutungo. Thompson Mutungo, you're on air, sir. Okay, I would want to ask um, General Mishamoto a question concerning uh, the economic affairs uh, of the economy. Mm -hmm. how, are they go how is he going and the Ad Party going to help us run the economy in a proper, directive manner concerning the, the debt burdens as so far with the board? Thank you. Thompson. Thank you, Thompson, for that question. Uh, he will definitely respond to that. All right. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to take any more calls. Uh, I think those will do for tonight. Uh, so, General Muntu, uh, some of them are people commending you. Some of them are people giving you advice. Of course, there's one, one who was also disagreeing with you. So, you can respond to them. Yeah, I would like to thank you, uh, the viewers who participated in this conversation. We encourage uh, those who uh, support change to keep on giving us uh, the advice uh, that we can do analysis of and see how to put it into, uh, how to implement it or how to put it into practice. On the side of uh, date, uh, definitely the, the date is heavy, resulting from the indiscipline of the regime 
the manner in which uh, the, the economy is hemorrhaging through corruption, through abuse of public uh, resources. Turning around that situation requires one, discipline, in also focusing the resources into the productive areas, into agriculture, into education, into health, into infrastructure, creating uh, an environment in which uh, businesses prosper so that uh, more jobs can be created, more production can be uh, expanded, and revenues therefrom can be used to pay for debt, but also simultaneously reducing on the costs of uh, government. I think one thing that we'll have to do is uh, review uh, public expenditure, most of which is going into uh, governance. Uh, we'll have to look at a number of areas that we need to cut down. I think there needs to be a conversation, for example, on uh, one example, if I may give one example, on the size of a parliament. We keep using this. How can you have a parliament of 500, 550 in a country with a population of 45 million people? An India which has got uh, a population of 1.3 billion, that's more than 30 times our size, has got a parliament of uh, the lower and upper house of 600. United States, which has, is the largest economy in the world, has got uh, the House of Representatives and Congress of 400 plus, and also has got a population of 300 something million. <laughs> our, our parliament is larger than the parliament of America. So both from size of the economy in comparison to America, two on the size of, uh, in terms of size of uh, population. <laughs> How can we be at that level? There needs to be a national conversation. Because there's a lot of emotion about uh, representation. Because uh, this regime has turned upside down. It's as if the larger the, the, the representation, the more the delivery of services. No, delivery of services is an outcome of efficiency of government, not the large size of parliament or large size of cabinet or large size of, uh, of the, of the <laughs> advisors. General Seven has got 100 plus advisors, got a cabinet of 80, 80 plus. How on earth are you can you have in, a, in an economy like ours and a country with our size of population have that many people? So there has to be an honest conversation on that and we see how to reduce on that. And of course, stamp out corruption, because we are losing about $500 million, at least the last uh, World Bank report I had a glimpse at. That's huge. So if you clamp down on corruption and then invest uh, resources into productive areas, then you can generate reduce the, on the, the cost revenues of and also reduce on the cost of administration. The, 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 the revenues generated can start uh, uh, for, for debt, then you don't create more debt, which you put into non-productive areas, <laughs> like is happening in this particular case. So discipline is at the core of the turnaround of what has gone wrong in our country, whether in economic terms, whether in uh, political terms. So those, you got us want quantitative change, look for people who are disciplined. Because you can have one indisciplined group get out, <laughs> and then you get another indisciplined group get in. And that's why we are positioning ourselves as Alliance for National Transformation, because what we offer is qualitative change, because we are a value-driven organization. And we really hope that Ugandans will understand that, and therefore put trust in us. All right. I, I would want to thank you so much, General Muntu, for the time you've given us. I want to thank you so much for your, your, your insights, and uh, unless you have uh, the parting short. Uh, Tonight. Thank you for giving us the opportunity, uh, NTV. Thank you, Patrick, for this uh, interview. Fellow Ugandans, we really would like to appeal to you that put trust in us as the Alliance for National Transformation. We are a disciplined group of people, you know, focused and purposeful, value-driven. We can turn around this country. You just need to trust us. We have a track record. You can check us out, quite a number of us. We also have young men and women who don't have a national profile yet, but they are good. <laughs> and time is going to prove that. And we need also more and more of that nature, that ca caliber, that character, continue flowing into ANT. 
so we can make history in this country, turn around this country, build it, and create an environment where people can excel in whatever endeavors they are in. All right. And therefore, be happy as, as a people, because I think at the end of the day, that's what every human being seeks for, happiness. All right. Thank you so much, General Mujisha Muntu Greg, for your time. And thank you so much for your great company. What I know, we belong to one family, family called Uganda. So let us try to do as much as possible to put building blocks that can make our family Uganda better, but not tear it apart. They will be coming closer to you. They will be having a conversation with you. Please make a choice from an informed decision because you know Uganda, we deserve better. Good night and God bless Uganda. <laughs>